All right, hello everyone, Max Mies from Avoda Rentals here. And this video is gonna show you everything about how to drive the car, mainly autopilot, everyone's favorite feature. Um, so if you look here, you can see there's nothing next to the um, kilometers per hour, if you will. Now, once we start driving, I'll insert a picture, but there will be a little number here with a circle around it and a steering wheel. Once you see that, that theoretically means that autopilot is available and ready to use. Now, it might be hard to tell right now, but I'm in downtown Montreal right now, which is please don't use uh, autopilot in the city. It's mainly for um, big roads, uh, les, les autoroutes and all this stuff. Um, it's really not meant because the current version, even though, so I'm driving our Model X right now. So yeah, if you see here, uh, you see a 70 and a, and a steering wheel. Um, but anyway, so even though we have Autopilot Hardware 2 on our Model uh, on our Model X right now, it's still um, pair, if you will, with Autopilot Hardware 1, meaning it can't see red lights, stop signs, things like that. So that's why you'd want to use it on um, highways like this. So the general rule of thumb of autopilot is if you can't see the lines, the car can't see the lines. So you see here to the right side, it's a little faded. Now the lines are a little better, a little clearer. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn autopilot on. So by pulling twice towards the stock that I'll insert a picture here, twice towards you, it turns it on. Now you'll see it's going around this bend and you'll see the yeah, it's getting a little squirmy here because I just took over because there was an exit. Now, the current, as of making this video, as of, uh, what are we today, August 2017 or something, it can't identify ex or merging lanes and exit lanes um, so, and, and construction. So you, hear, you see here, there's all those cones to the right. You would definitely not want to have autopilot on in that lane. So... So you always want to be aware. Now, when you do turn on autopilot, there's a little message that comes up. I'll put a picture right here. Uh, basically saying, it's in beta mode. Please keep your hands on at all times on the wheel. Now, I'll put it on again here. Now, when you rent the car from us, sure, you can, you know, be a little fancy. Show your friends and family that, you know, the whole look ma, no wheels type thing. And, you know, take your hands off and look, I'm not touching anything. My legs, you know. But uh, we do recommend just kind of maybe resting your hands or keep keeping them at least very close to the wheel. Uh, so in the case of an emergency, you could always turn it off. Now to turn it off, there are a few ways you can do that. Now the way I just did it there is I took control of the wheel. Now when you take control of the wheel, the cruise control still stays on. So if you want to see, you can see the little blue line. So that means the cruise control is still on. Now to turn off autopilot and cruise control, the same stock that you turn autopilot and cruise control on, you would push once away from you. So now you see um, the letters are in gray, but if I were to put it on, it'd go into blue like that. So you always be, you always want to pay attention to see if it's blue or gray because it has happened that there was an owner, he thought he, wa he wasn't in autopilot mode, or sorry, he was in autopilot mode and then he was going around this big bend and turns out he wasn't, and then he completely totaled the car. So you always wanna make sure um, you know in what mode you are in when you're driving the car. All right, and kind of the last aspect of autopilot, or the last kind of cool aspect to mention, is automatically in change. Now it's not automatic in the sense that you can put in a address and it'll automatically switch lanes and everything to go to that address. But what you do is you simply turn on the indicator, make sure no one's in the way, and the car will jolt over to the next lane. Now, if you wanna do that again, just do it. So if you wanna go in the left lane, you would signal to turn left and the car will go in the left lane. Um, if you wanna go to the right, right lane, you you know signal to turn right. And then kind of once you're in the lane um, or, or kind of halfway across the lane, you'd wanna turn the signal off uh, just so that it doesn't confused and maybe switch over another lane and um, as you can see here so there's the two blue lines right and when you switch lanes the lane you're splitting into or switching into actually kind of goes dotted as you can see right there 
and then it catches itself, and then they both go solid blue uh, once again. All right, so if you see here, the lines that the vehicle sees, um, when they're black, it means autopilot is unavailable. Um, once they're gray, like now, it means autopilot is available, and once they're blue, that means autopilot is engaged. And now, if you're kind of skeptical, if you're not too confident with the autopilot, one thing that could be reassuring here a little bit is, so if you look here, there's a slight bend coming up. And if you look at what the car sees, so on the dash here, you'll see that the car will see the, the lines and that it bends. So if you see that the, the line or the, um, the road is bending like this, it means it sees it and everything is good and you're on track. And the car also automatically slows down. Oh, that's another thing. So if, if this is too close for you, maybe, um, I'll just turn the autopilot off here. If you, you can always uh, adjust the distance between the cars. So at the end of the autopilot stock, I'll put a picture right here, there's a little dial which you can turn and that'll adjust the the distance between you and the car in front of you. It goes from one all the way to seven, I believe. All right, so um, here you'll see that the lines are blue, um, but if it can't see the lines, sometimes what it does, it'll latch onto the car in front of you. So you can see the car right here is kind of a grayish, whitish color. Now, if it kind of loses track of the lines, what it'll do, it'll latch on to the car in front. Now. The key term there is latch on. So if the car in front of you kind of wants to take the off ramp, but you don't, well, the car will, because it's latched on, it'll kind of follow that car. So that's another thing to really look out for because um, you know you don't want to get into an accident or maybe take an off ramp or something that you didn't plan on. So always make sure, uh, once again, eyes on the road, preferably hands on the wheel as well. All right, and now, so you see here, it's locked at 90. So this is indicating you're going, or sorry, it's set to 90 kilometers per hour. You're in a 70 zone, and you're currently going 75 because there's a car in front. Now, if you're in a, say, on a major highway that it's, the limit is 100 kilometers per hour here, and there's no traffic around, so you wanna go, say, 110, what you could do is, so the autopilot stock, you go, up all the way so you see how it just upped it to 95 um, that's going up past the breaking point now you could go decrease the speed the same way see now I'm back to 90 um, or you could do it gently so you, you do it by increments of one kilometer per hour so now I'm going 84 83 82 uh, etc um, and so that's all with the autopilot stock all right, and if you're using autopilot for a long time, um, it'll start to throw some messages at you. So it'll always encourage you to put the hands on the wheel. So at first there'll be a little message that shows up saying, please put your hand on the wheel. If you don't put your hands on the wheel, the screen around, I'll put pictures here so you can see, but the screen around will start to flash white um, to warn you, please put your hands on the wheel. If that doesn't happen, um, it'll start beeping at you. Um, and if you still don't put your hands on the wheel, then autopilot will uh, turn off like it just did. Um, and you won't be able to use it for the rest of the drive. All right, so now for the auto park feature. So it doesn't read, the car doesn't read the lines. What it does, it reads two cars. So what you wanna do is find a spot like this one where there's two cars and there's a prime spot right in between, as you can see right there. What you'd wanna do is drive slowly past that, um, that the, the spot, the parking spot, very slowly, like under five kilometers an hour. And then the car should read the spot. Now you see that right there. So there will be, um, you have to put it into reverse to start and you'll see the spot right there. But what you wanna look here on the dash is there will be a little P as well, just to, just to show that it's available. And to start, all you have to do is press the button. And then now it'll calculate and make sure it doesn't hit the cars. Now there is a guy here, hopefully he doesn't 
run into us. So you see it'll stop and then it'll spin back around and then it'll drive a little bit forward and then it'll adjust itself and then it'll spin back around. For this one, you could show that there's, you're not using your hands. You don't have to put your hands on the wheel for this one, um, but it'll ease its way into the spot the wheel will spin around right here. And there you go. So once again, it'll use the cars, not the lines. So you see here, it's actually a very good, very good um, distance between the lines, but that's because the cars beside us are actually at a respectable distance as well. All right, so for um, parallel parking, it's the exact same as perpendicular. What you'd want to do is find a spot like this one here. Again, there's two cars, but you want to find a safe distance in between. Um, once again, drive by slowly so that the cameras can, uh, I guess, read and see the spot. And then so you just drive by slowly. Again, under five kilometers per hour. And it should be able to see the spot by now. There you go. So you put it into reverse. And just like perpendicular, press the start and uh, enjoy the show. <laughs> enjoy the car parking itself. And now, of course, um, if you're using it in the city or somewhere where there's a lot of traffic, foot traffic, all that stuff, maybe don't use it. But if you do use it, um, just be very careful that uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, that no one hits it or, or you know, you, you use uh, hand gestures out the window to show that um, the car is parking itself. So you can see it's getting really close there. But it's showing right here to the left. It's showing on the dash. It's showing uh, all the uh, how close you are. Like I think me personally, I would have never made this park. But uh, <laughs> this is so tight. It, it, it got close at uh, 27 centimeters right there. Right there, auto park complete. And now puts the car into park and now you're good. All right, so as you can see, the car is now off. Now to turn it on, all you have to do is have the key inside the vehicle and put your foot on the brake. That's it. Now to put the car into drive, what you have to do is put your foot on the brake and with this lever here, go all the way down. So you see like this, now, now it's in drive. Now to put it into reverse, you can go all the way up and to put it in neutral, if you want, you just go halfway like that. Um, but we'll put it into drive for now. And you'll see there is a little H there. Now what that H is, is, is a hold. So right now I'm not holding, or I'm not pressing on the brakes or the accelerator or nothing. And the car is not moving at all. Now, if I were to accelerate just, or put my foot on the accelerator just a little bit, it'll disappear. So now the car, well, I mean, we're on a flat surface right now, but the car would start to roll. So if you're on a little bit of a hill, a little, a little bit of an incline, um, you'll want to make sure that little H is in. Now, for that little H to appear, you'd want to press all the way in the brakes. So you want to put your foot in, be sure you press all the way in like that, and then it'll appear. And now the car will not move one inch. All right, so once you found a parking spot or something, you'd want to brake, and literally, that's it. Just this little button here, that puts it, the car into park, and now uh, you see, once you put the car into park, uh, the little menu here for the doors will appear, uh, where you could then open all the doors, um, and so, yeah. All right, so that ends this video. I'm just charging here right now. And actually, if you have questions about charging, I'll put a link uh, in the description below for our charging video. Um, but that was everything for autopilot. I mean, to turn it on, it's just twice towards you. To turn it off, it's once away with the brakes or take control. Um, that was kind of it. So once again, if ever you have any questions, um, you have our name, uh, you have our number, be sure to call us, text us, email us, whatever, and we'll be happy to answer all the questions.